feedback and comments on the decision to move the Thames Information Centre in Thames here. Um, so I'll refer to the report that went to Council to go through that first. So the purpose of the report was to update us on the expressions of interest for Thames Information Centre operations and to consider options for the future of the service. So I really want to highlight that options for the future of the service was the purpose of the report. Um, I did find it ironic that the report did not include any recommendation from the Thames Community Board mm -hmm. in the very same meeting that Council reconfirmed to continue with community boards as local democracy. Uh, uh, I would think that a decision as important as moving your information centre in the town would seek feedback and comment and that would be included in the report. Um, the next thing I note about the report is the funding provided to each uh, information centre around the peninsula, with uh, four of the information centres receiving $50,000, around about $50,000 per year. Given that the recommendation of the report uh, is for an unmanned service in Thames, the first thing I sort of wondered about how comparative those costs are. So uh, my understanding is that the services in Fitianga, Coromandel and Fungamata will be manned services for $50,000 per year, um, but the um, one that, that recommended one for gold fields is unmanned for the same amount. So I wonder about the comparative costs of running a manned centre um, versus an unmanned centre. And of course, we know that in any business, your largest cost is always labour. Uh, then we move on to that CUIK platform in the report. Um, and I, you know, I note that the in John Freer's uh, presentation to council at that report, uh, he, he noted that the suggestion of technology came from the staff member over and so that was suggested from TCD to, to them. Um, note that the kiosks will also be used for centre communications, uh, which I don't know if there's a commercial advantage in Archibald's small tenants having being part of that, it's just a question that came to my mind. And therefore, if they, if Goldfields Mall is going to advantage commercially from it, should they have a commercial or financial contribution? Moving on through the report, um, 
but it talks about uh, that the the proposal will offer appropriate local advertisement, but no definition of what that actually means. Will that local advertising be exclusive to mall tenants, or will it be open to all uh, commercial advertising through tenants? Uh, I guess the other thing about the, the um, CUIK unit, which um, has uh, is being funded by council providing first years funding up front, is there's no mention of who will own that asset. So that lets me clear that asset is being purchased with rate rate funding, but the report does not clarify whether that will be a council asset or a gold bill to more asset. The report also mentions that the Thames Eye site was running at a loss. I often hear this in uh, relation to um, community services and so forth, and I think it's it's a misleading argument to put in any council report because I would like to know which council service currently runs at a problem. The swimming pools, the halls, the public toilets, the water, which I mean, council services do not run out of problem. So it's almost misleading to start to make an argument about something not making a problem. Let's be clear, the community is service. And not necessarily expecting to make a problem. Uh, the report says the council staff been in discussions with the TBA. That was early on, but not recently. Uh, and that there has, and other businesses, but there's been no interest, or well, that's not correct. Uh, there has been interest, but it was made clear to many businesses that the funding will not be provided to the same level as the existing. Getting to the suggested resolution, and this is really my biggest problem. Uh, I would suggest that this is not a suggested resolution, it's a suggested ultimatum, because it simply provides two options. One, approve the expression of interest from Goldfields Mall, to install the digital platform at Goldfields Mall to operate the information centre. Or one, no information service is required for kids. So you basically, council was. So I'm going to quickly uh, go through some of the options that could have been explored. The same unmanned centre could have been provided at the existing site at the civic centre with no movement buses, little expense. Uh, it could have been offered to the current custodian contract as part of that contract. Uh, I've spoken to Sharon and she would have been interested in uh, providing that service along with the custodian services at the civil, civic centre. Um, it could have been offered for commercial lease at that existing site rather than move to gold fields. Um, it, there was, uh, the Thames Business Association, and I don't speak for them, but I'm the, I was told by Sue that uh, they were interested if the funding carried on at the same level and they were told it wouldn't. So that is an option that should have been presented in the report because for an extra $30,000 per year, council could have had a man centre run by the Thames Business Association at the same site. Um, so, you know, there's five options that could have been presented rather than make a of its gold fields or it's nothing, no information sent. So I think the report's very misleading. Um, the effect of this decision, uh, the decision has basically removed visitor services from the centre of town, providing commercial advantage to Goldfields Mall and disadvantages those town centre businesses which currently benefit from the visitor centre in the centre of town. The visitor centre in the centre of town and particularly strategically placed in the middle of Mary Street provides a perfect location in between the town centre and the mall and advantages both potentially and provides that link, as did Mary Street prior to the five being put in and the road being closed. So, uh, to me, the decision to move visitor services away and Goldfields made it clear in their proposal that they are looking to move the buses as well, uh, that it's another reason that reinforces the need to reopen Mary Street, to reconnect Goldfields Mall, Pack and Safe to 
the town centre. Uh, the vibe has failed to generate additional activity in the town centre. It has removed 10 car parks and it has closed the road. And yet, as a result of that, we have more vacant car parks around our business than we ever have before, which just says to me that we are not gaining from the benefit of a link between Goldfields Mall and the mall to the town centre. Some days I used to employ a staff member to help me run the bookshop. I know I'll do that. We don't get enough business. Town Please, is, just one more. Yes, I can wrap it up right now. I mean, I can talk for a long time. I've got a lot of key points, but I would ask, I would finish by asking two things of the community. One is that you reconsider the option, and I may not in my request this council. That you put on hold the agreement with Goldfields Mall because, because not all options were explored or presented to either community board or council. So that's my first request. That you hold on and explore the full range of options for the visitor centre. And secondly, I would appeal to you to reopen Mary Street in between Goldfields and the town centre, particularly at this time of year. We do. 30% of our annual turnover in the next two months. A lot of that turnover comes from visits to community. That's a huge risk to, I'm sure not only our business, but other town centre business. 30% in two months. That 30% of our revenue carries us through the winter. Thanks, Bruce. So those are my two requests. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, can I just a question? I understood there was going to be an item on here related to create the bike, which has been removed. Yes, it is. Do, do, we do we understand why that's been removed? Sorry? As the chair, I request the report being removed. Yes. I said, there's going to be a question. Yes. There'll be a discussion after the report. Okay. Conflicts of interest, I mean, conflicts of interest. There'll be none. Wrong. I just have one thing. Um, as we were going around the table to declare conflict at the last meeting, um, I mentioned the, the two that or the, the fact that I had a conflict with Provision Town Teams and then afterwards. After I'd had my turn, also mentioned that I had a conflict with the community board, um, community centre board, and I'd just like that notice, please. So thank you. Sure. No Anyone else? Okay. All right. And then the second one. Yep. Rob Motion. 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 Okay, moving on to 2.1. Right of renewal, Royal New Zealand Society wants to mention of calling for animals for corporate. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I just take the report as read and um, here to answer any questions if there are some, but. 
seems pretty straightforward that yeah. here they're doing their job, they're mm -hmm. going to keep doing their job. And, and we all like animals. Yeah, that's the main thing. Yeah, that's just that one thing where they come under the umbrella of the uh, National Yeah, yeah. 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 Streamlining, which is probably good. Yeah. So, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll move that we accept the receipt. Great, thanks. I'm here for the next one as well. So, so the new lease that Tim's Cricket Club has incorporated the Rose Hub. Um, the report, I read mean the report. It's just seen the um, make sense that Rosalind's currently. Um, just going through a boundary of the other the land of them, the existing ones so that kind of makes sense to um, get it tidied up. Get it. I just had a question about whether what the cricket I want to do this has that been done in consultation with the other users of the ground, by the rugby players and so on, that they are not. That side of Rose Park is mainly used by football, um, so they have been in collaboration with football um, regarding this or the whole way through. So, yes, they have been working with the other clubs for football mainly because they're the main users of that field. Thank you. So um, I have a couple of things. Um, the cricket club yes, I understand that they need a lease to be able to get more funding from outside. Um, do they need to be stuck so far out? Because um, they're quite a way out from toilets and shelter. And, uh, it's like almost there in Siberia. Yeah, is this, is, this is, this is, sorry. Um, I just think there's nowhere else that they could be. It's sort of a bit more closer with to the amenities. To the amenities. No, this is the best place. They they sort of just sat with football and worked out where the football fields need to be, and and also it seemed to be the only appropriate place that they could have their their cricket nets, and it is is, is not ideal because it is quite a far you know far away, um, but that's what they've agreed with the other clubs. That's where they uh, think the best spot is. So they've agreed that they think it's the best spot, and they have not talked to any of the other clubs. Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Oh no, they have talked to the other clubs. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is in collaboration with the football club. So they've marked out the space just based on where the old nets were, but bringing it forward and still giving football enough room for their pitches during during the winter period. Thank you. Thank you. I thought in some ways having it sort of a little bit further away from that car park area may um, Essentially, make it less likely that um, <laughs> some people might decide that they want to, you know, rock up and you know uh -huh. use it as a place to bowl balls at the bottom or whatever. You know, it's just that little bit further away. I thought about it being so far away, it may attract vandalism because it's a, you know, um, I think they've been looking at this site for some time because they've. You know, and I think they've had a lot of conversations with rugby and stuff like that because it's been two seasons now that they've been trying to get where they're going to put these things. They're a very active little group. Um, and the current events, what's been good repair? Yeah, it's been good repair. Yeah, they need to be repaired. Any more questions? Just one comment really and that is that the um, the great thing is that everyone about the youth is because they're open. Mm. So is it real bonus? Yes. So I'd be happy to make the Yeah, thank you. 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 Moving on to 2.1, with the available for license. We have here the available to speak to the report. Good morning, Derek. Good morning, board. How are you? Good. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify. 
the resolution here is just saying that we approve the following proposed site, which I'd like to mention as well, operators, but it's not. Um, it, 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 it's council as a deciding about the way to end the process and everything, isn't it? Because we had that at our last council. Thing. So this is not saying here's two sites and we're going to do that wait and tender process for the licenses. That's still my, my yeah. understanding is that the community board, as I read it, my, my understanding is the community board is required to approve the site. So yeah. 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 And, and the rest was up to the council. Yeah. 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 No, I, I had uh, two questions. Um, this doesn't list Kurunui Bay car park as a potential site, um, but I'm fairly certain, you know, thinking back to when we last looked at the commercial leases, that we did have people applying there and we actually did, correct me if I'm wrong, Derek, but I'm pretty sure we actually granted a license for a coffee cart to operate at the Kurunui Bay car park. Sorry, you are quite correct on that. Yes, they were. Yeah, so are we now saying absolutely no to Coronary Bay Car Park? Uh, well, what we're doing is re recommending um, two sites. So Coronary Bay, um, from the operator's perspective, didn't turn out to be commercially um, viable. We could throw that back into the mix if you wanted to, um, but they didn't didn't seem to make any profit and didn't operate out of there um, for very long. Can, can I ask a question? So my question was, why are there only these two? So, because I immediately thought, well, what about Kurunuri Bay? And then I began to think, well, when the when the Oku Marine Precinct is open, might somebody want to open up a thing down there? And so why is it? So I've got two questions. A, why is it only two? And B, why is it only one uh, license per venue? You know, those are my two questions. Okay. Well, we ran through the various sites and this is what we came up with, but this is the opportunity for the board, if they wanted to, to identify additional sites, would have to uh, go through a process of making sure that those sites, if they came up, are suitable, um, you know, do a check, land status, reserve management plan check, et cetera. But um, if you want to put forward additional sites, then put them forward. Can I ask him? <laughs> um, say there's a big um, Waka Ama um, festival at the Tikuru Foretour, which there sometimes is, and someone wants an off life, uh, off um, one off coffee cart there. Does this make that impossible? Because we we are different from you know at a council table we're talking about class boats going to Cathedral Cove etc. Here we're talking about something a little differently. So we're trying to match a council proposal around our local needs, and we're not wanting to cut ourselves down, but we also have a reality that. Um, we probably have more one off than, than huge crowd coming for three weeks of the year. So that's our challenge, Derek. If we lock into even if it's three or four sites, does it rule out Mr. Coffee and the Arts Center um, cruising up to Tikuru and um, selling coffee there? Um, well, if you're talking about a, a one-off, that's that will come under the event process in terms of an application because they would then come under those rules and regulations set around those events. Whereas what we're identifying here is um, the opportunity for an operator to set up on a on a permanent basis under under rules and regulations, but they would have a recurring right to um, enter that site Monday to Sunday, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and continue um, to operate over the three or four or five year term, depending on what council decides. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and I think also at that same meeting, wasn't there also talk about number one up at um, Southwood? But 
but I think they got through there. Well, even we were asked, and they didn't, because it was at the Wipe Out Tapping Reserve. So oh, yeah. And then we're not back with a commercial asset. It's a little time. Um, I did have one other question. Uh, so, Derek, I've noticed that the Brown, the Brown Street car park, you know, adjacent to the toilet and the um, miniature railway is not listed, but I have seen businesses operating there, I think, on an ad hoc basis. Um, is that important for us to consider now as well, or is that best to the link to the compliance team? So, the, if you're seeing like a Mr. Whippy or whatever turn up, they're like a mobile trader, so they've um, they are allowed to operate on road reserve and um, appear. I think the timing is around about half an hour. They need to move off again relatively quickly. Yeah. Um, so they're not, they don't have the right to set up on a permanent basis there. All good. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah, so Derek, why, why only one license per lead? Why? Why, you know, I'm just thinking somebody wants to sell fish and chips and somebody wants to sell coffee and muffins and somebody else wants to sell fresh fruit. Right. Well, I suppose if you're only offering one license, it makes that license more valuable. Um, that's one, one thing to consider. If you're offering more, then it devalues, uh, you know, each license because there's, there's more available. Um, you've also got to consider as well that um, Shoppers Car Park does uh, or can get quite crowded at times uh, with the mobile motor motorhomes, etc. Um, but if you wanted to consider um, adding an extra one there, then again, that's the board's prerogative. This is why we're having this discussion today. Well, I think Rose Park could probably handle more than one thing. Yeah, but just one comment in regard to the netball and they really appreciate the coffee cart. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, so cool. it's not quite in the location that's on page. Yeah. <laughs> but only one by the two point two. But I guess that I mean Derek would work through that. But it is a good point that you raised. Yeah, I think usually the coffee cart is on that five two point two sort of over the next place. Yeah. I actually live in parking at the front of the pavilion. There's a little driveway down there that's oh. parked there. Um, Mr. Whippy, I think, is he parks down there because he does ice cream and coffee. Yeah, I mean, it's all about the views of the park. So, what's getting the park is exactly work for the. It's about needing needs. The and I think the other thing for the increasing in the car park in Queen Street, you know, it is very close to our centre of everything and pens and all the food provided. Yep. So there's a sense that. Um, we also have to think about what's already here. And um, as I say, it isn't really an issue for teams, it right. is for other places. So I it's how do we get the balance right? Because I there's enough fish and chip shops in teams, there's enough pretty much enough coffee shops, and it, it's about how do we provide that flexibility for the one-offs and for the traveling public. Yeah. Um, so, Robin, you asked about that you've seen something operating down by the Morgan Railway, yeah. and I think we've all often seen uh, guys selling fruit and veggies at uh, shop and car parks. So, presumably, Eric, when he's there selling vegetables, he's not abiding by the rules. Um, I'm unaware of any license that's been issued to a, a mobile. Um, fruit and veg store, so I'm imagining that they're a, a mobile trader. Uh, yeah. The only license that I'm aware of that's been issued at shop is, is, a, um, is the Treats um, Cafe, which is now operating, I believe, inside the mall. Yeah. I think it's a similar group who you see them all around, things like Cairo, you see them in the end of YP, they turn up for a few hours selling. Yeah. And I've seen fruit, yeah. Fruit. yeah. yeah. 
Um, so our question for us is do we increase the fight for these more permanent leases or do we leave it at that? That's your question, isn't it? Right. Yeah. Well, I, mean, yes. I, I hear what you're saying, Derek, about increasing the value of the the one license, if there is just one license there, but I'm, I, I don't know whether it's necessarily my job to to make it easier for one person to operate um, and to increase one, one business's profit. So I'd be really happy to move that we increase the number of food and produce licenses at Rhodes Park only to two, it's just to give us a bit more flexibility, because I hear what you're saying about the shop and South Park, but it's very close to town. And there are a lot of established business you know, on the main street. Um, so I think that having one there is appropriate, but I would really support increasing the proposed number of licenses at Rhodes Park to consume. And your thinking is the really right. flexibility in terms of events happening down there. Um, but if it's an event, people can get a one off. Yeah, true. I, I'm, yeah, I don't know. Well, if I don't get somebody to see me, then it will be anyway. Yeah. So. I will see them then. Thank you, sir. Oh, Susan. Yes. Oh, all the three. Oh, <laughs> okay. Motion. All those in favour? Right. And yes. Carried. So we've got one in the Queen Street car park and two in the Rhodes Park. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Derek. Have I moved the whole thing? Quite a campaign. Thank you. I don't know. Okay, we can point them to that. We can take it. Okay, great. Just one of them. Cool. Thanks, Board. Cheers. And then the councillors will be voting on the tender of waiver process on and how that relates to the um, So, um, yeah, and having to think district wide at the same time as satisfying team's needs, right? And so, clarity at some point about what the community board thinks about that, I think, would be useful. I'm not sure when it comes up again at council, but. Um, well, we are having a bit of a test. Do we have to adjourn until morning tea? That we just do think. I'm just trying to get the first up. Thank you. So, what are we up to now? Four. Four point one. Four point one. So, um, for the chair, we're just trying to get a hold of the proprietor who has seen to disappear online. So, we could move on to the ancient schedule. No, I'm not going to do that. All right, so we might just move on to 5.1. Actually, you should have that. Yeah, I think we should have that. Yeah, I'm going to do 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 the service plan to discussion is while I was while I was doing my, my background homework about the um item three point one the release license commercial operators um the ladies who run Treats Caravan reminded me that they had asked in April whether there was any availability of the seating in the, um, the car park, the shoppers car park on Queen Street, but I've got a new one. I've seem to recall it being in the action schedule, but it might not have made it onto there. But how do I go about finding out whether where that happened, where that got to as an idea? I think that's it. Yeah. Thank you. 
COVID supply deliveries increased cost of steel, etc., uh -huh. affecting our ability to deliver the capital project, not just for, you know for the yeah. whole country, but for us and teams here. Yeah, through the chair, um, that it is having a big effect. It's starting to have more and more of an effect, um, and so we've had. Um, a number of things. The guys were talking about something yesterday. Um, some product has gone up 20% in the last uh, three months. Uh, so we are starting to see big increases around um, concrete, uh, steel, you know, and just a of other things. So there's those big increases coming through, which will have an impact. And we'll just manage those as best as we can. But obviously, if we um, are running out of uh, funds on the project, we'll be able to come back to boards and council for approval for more uh, money or revise the scope and try and stay with, you know, live within our budget. Um, the other challenge that we've got, I think we've probably noticed it one or two places in here, is the delays on things. So there's quite a few things where there's like 20 week delays on things, um, which is a long time. You know, so things that previously might have been eight week delivery time, they are now 20 week delivery. Uh, and you would have all heard about the cost of um, shipping has gone up astronomically as well. So these things are having a, a real impact on us. Um, Closer to home, we're, we're having still having challenges with uh, Auckland and Waikato or areas of Waikato lockdown. So people um, you know, can't get out. Um, so it is just making make things a real challenge to um, to deliver. But at this stage, we're still uh, we're still just, you know, doing what we can, we're trying to get everything lined up. So even though it's going to take a long time for things to deliver, delivery might be later in the year than we'd like. But at least we've got it lined up and it's all kind of coming through. And obviously, we're, we're very hopeful that. Uh, lockdown situation will start to ease, which we will probably get things moving again. So, yeah, that's a bit of And it's, I mean, we know from now that the um, Territory Cultural Centre are looking to um, check the pools out there, but the guy who does it is a specialist that um, folks say, oh, I'm going to pool and it's not going to happen. But yeah, if everything has a flow, we think, oh, that could just be uh, done online or something. But, yeah, it's in this age, they do make things, you know, they can find some work and they do make things, and it's yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I had two questions. Mm -hmm. I've had a, at some stage, I remember the um, the report had Waimu boat rack on it, and I think it was for a convenience, you know, it's not on yet. The second question is. Roads Park car park in between Rugby Club and Old yes. Club rooms, and what was going to happen there? Um, through the chair, I'll, I'll follow up on the way we vote around and make sure that's back on if, if it should be on, which sounds like it should. Um, the Garden Roads Park car park, um, I just want to cast my mind back. We had discussions pre LTP leading up to that, and I think that was one of the projects that. You know, we went through the must do's and the nice tabs. I think there was one of the nice tabs where we said they could wait for a number of years. I'm, 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 yeah, I'm 100% I'm pretty sure, pretty sure we had that discussion, that discussion around it. It was quite a big job. Mm -hmm. And as far as the teams came to the board, um, there, was, there was some prioritisation that meant that that got, got pushed out. We need to live with it for another two to three years. I know that's not driving there, no. but, um, but I think there was a discussion from me really, but I stand on that. I just I, I, the reason I bring it up is because I see that we're going to reseal reserve car parks. Yep. So we did, we did touch on this yeah. um, before. Um, so the, the challenge with that is that um, resealing a car park is um, is a fairly low cost um, activity, relatively speaking, and it maintains the, the surface of the car park. So um, so. A seal on a road or a car park is really like a raincoat, like a waterproofing. And so that over time, the seal will eventually get very fine cracks in it. If you don't seal it in time, then you get water going and it just blows apart like the foundation of that area. So it's a, you've got to get it in time to kind of keep that, that raincoat intact. Obviously, a raincoat is not going to help the roads car park, um, roads park come home because it's, it's totally, you know, it is what it is. It had old millings put on it that, that didn't really work that well. So basically that car park is going to need to be like a full redo. So um, so it's not like you can take that money and go, let's check it on roads parks and that'll be done at least with a nice car park. There. It would be a, and Ed might correct me if I'm wrong, but I would say it'd be a much more substantial amount of money to try and sort out the roads. Yeah. So that's the, that's the rationale. Thank you. And, and I just seem to remember an earlier discussion about it. I think we asked about it and it was sort of remedial work 
down in the meantime that I can't remember what the thing else was no. no. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, like as far as there's nothing you can do that's actually going to work. No, yeah, and the thing is, there's more potholes than actual non potholes out there, I would say. So, um, so you basically could have just about the whole thing, fill it all out, and, and redo the whole thing. Um, in the LTP, there was, um, I think it was 50 grand was allocated to investigate the uh, bike trail cycle route up to the Kaurana Valley. Yes. Um, at which point does that project switch mark so start getting on, on here? So um, so these are all CapEx projects and that's, that's an OPEX project, but what some of the other boards do is they have, they have their CapEx program, so their work program, and then they have another section for operational projects, so we could do that if you want, run that one and that one right yeah. yeah. so we can we'll bring that into the bottom um, and we can start providing updates on how things are going. And then, right. well, I think it's noting the water improvements in the 10 weeks out. Yes. Yeah. Um, and that you know the government's announced that it's going to be mandatory establishment of water plan. Yeah. So for us as a community board, we keep going as planned at this point in time until we're told otherwise. So Correct. this work program continues yes. and we keep investing and improving our assets. Yes. And then that process will go on as a time of set what as a community board we should understand. Yes, correct. Through the chair definitely the thing is that we need to keep maintaining what we're doing at this stage. Um, the last thing I want to do is, is stop and pull back. Um, yes. And there's a number of reasons for that is that um, you never quite know what's going to happen in the future. So if you keep, you know, we can't it's pretty too much, so keep on going. Mm -hmm. The other reason I'd say that is that as we move into the, it's these bigger entities in a number of years, we want to try and push in our own communities the best places we can before we get into a bigger entity where there's a different prior, different set of prioritisations happening. Yeah. We want to make sure that we can do whatever we can do to get our communities on the on the peninsula to the level that we want to get them to. So, um, and I think the further along that, that path we are, the better. So I say yeah, we need to keep on going. Cool. Thank you. Good questions. Good questions. A couple of um, just really minor updates on the first couple of points. If, um, if there's nothing else, um, so the footpath rehab um, that's planned to be done, and obviously that's just repairing sections of footpath across the network um, that need to be done and replacing them. Uh, that's that that works planned for December, January. Uh, and the streetlight renewals, which is the one under it. Um, we have had some real delays on getting streetlight um, the poles from overseas. But at this stage, we're looking to try that it looks like we should be able to get that done by the end of this calendar year. So by the end of December. So when we come back in February, we'll have a few more updates and a few more completions on, on those projects. That was one last question. Um, okay. Um, several people have asked me about the work that we've done. Um, out opposite Tokyo Vineyards with the clearing of the trees coming oh, state yeah. highway there. Obviously, it's a problem for Tarty, but people have pointed out that um, the work that the tree people did is there some branch of line around it potentially is a fire hazard, although obviously struggles to start a fire at the moment, but um, as, as we get closer to the summer, and also there's you know just like stumps and things like yeah. that. That's, it's not a great look as far as people driving into town. Um, but I don't know where the what the requirement of what the fertility is as far as yes, we've cleared those trees away, have we did the nice? Obviously they're not gonna you know completely landscape it, it'll be some road reserve and some private yeah. property. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what I'm asking. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can we can um, we can ask the question of like okay, yeah, and just see what they say. But I mean, as long as it's not a safety hazard, and it's um, they can probably do they probably leave it exactly how they want to leave it. You know, yeah. there's no kind of obligation on them, obviously, um, mm -hmm. as much as they'd like to. That clear like deck for the um, power lines, haven't they? I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah I believe so. So. Um, so again, it could be a combination of um, mm -hmm. private property in the uh, and it could be um, um, power company, you know, 
as well. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. but we can ask the creatures and, um, and see, see if we can. Yeah, I'll get those questions too. Because I know, you know yeah. I know one of the people has spoken to Ben and said that he's just getting run around on them. Okay. So, we um, I just, um, Amon could well be bringing it to the attention, but for the board and the shoreline management plan meeting at Tupuru, the gnarly question of that creek come culvert come whatever it is drain right at the beginning of Tupuru, which has been an issue for the last 20 years about whether it's our right. roads, regional council, and the, the impact it has or doesn't have on the beach, etc. Yep. So that was an issue. So Amon could well have picked it up, but just for the board, that remains one of those sort of wicked problems that is hard to fix. And top for long most of the time until something big happens and then. Yeah. Uh, so just a heads up as Amon. Yeah. He had a very busy couple of weeks. He has, yeah. I'll have a quick chat to him about it anyway and see. Right. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, uh, motion there. So, we've got the foundation. Sorry. Yep. Probably good. Yeah. Was there anything else you were wanting to correct? No, I think that was it. Sorry. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Okay, cool. Uh, you can go down one. Well, I don't think we need to get to No, thank you. I just, I just thought I'd run through the council meeting. Uh, council unanimously supported the Ministry of Health vaccination um, process, and so all we can do as individuals in our community to support vaccination would be appreciated. Um, three, two, three things are out for public consultation, as well as the link about climate declaration. There's the final proposal for the representation review, local alcohol policy, and Easter Sunday trading. The policies that haven't change substantially, but they still go out. So if anyone's particularly interested in that. Um, and um, a lot of work being done around the solid waste contract, which is um, due for renewal 23-24, run back then, don't quite be important. And so um, I just want to acknowledge that that process seems to have started appropriately early and it will be really important to can engage around waste minimisation, etc. And um, I think that's me. And um, thank you for the people that have spent so much time getting the shoreline management um, plans to where they are, both at government and um, staff wise, and went to both meetings, and on we go. So well done, thank you. Thank you, Sally. Sure. Um, I've got Carrot Graham coming to see me tomorrow. He's from Coromandel PR. So um, that's, yeah, we're just going to have a call it all about um, there, that, and conversations with possibilities. Um, got the Age Friendly Fund uh, off to MSD, and that's $15,000. We've applied it for the development of a website to capture all the services and agencies that provide. Um, Services here in Thames, but will also be wider afield because they also um, deliver services right through it, um, the peninsula. So it'll be um, here. It's going to be quite exciting actually to be able to do that. People can just go on the left side, it's local, it's you know, and find out what's available to help people of all ages. So I'll let you know when that's when we get a decision.
except for me. Thank you, Shiro. Um, yes, so we had uh, um, a couple of pre and environmental meetings, and we had our grant meeting um, last week. So um, that was hugely oversubscribed. Um, we had 18,000, and we had requests uh, of 80. Um, and one of the things that came out of that was the idea that um, when we're asking people to apply for grants, um, unfortunately, one of the one of the groups that asked that asked for about eleven thousand, and it said that they couldn't proceed unless they got the whole lot, but their project was not four by one chance. So um, yeah, I don't know. I think just to try to get some sort of messaging out that the groups have a look at what's available and say, okay, we're not going to get ten thousand, but we could do this, save one of them for a couple of thousand. Just so that people have got more um, chance of being able to get that because I mean, we had to start off with like a whole lot to get that number down. So um, it, it's, it's good being a meeting to be handing out grants, but it's also a bit heartbreaking as well because um, you know, the vast majority of them are worthwhile and be great, but um, yeah, we couldn't handle it. Um, and yeah, just sort of also been to a number of um, the meetings, went to the shoreline management. One that was on um, Friday at um, the Thames. I've actually turned up a week earlier for that, um, but it, it wasn't on that today. Um, and also at Tapuru, and here yeah, just um, the work, and I think after they did Tapuru, they were doing one up in Coromandel mm -hmm. as well. So they basically done three meetings, public meetings within 24 hours. Um, and I thought it was, it was pitched at a good level. And um, yeah, people have seen um, the public seem happy to have start to get that information um, being made available to them. Um, and I think that is about it. Thank you, Martha. Uh, yeah, right. I said, um, no, I also attended the shoreline management panel, um, coastal panel well, meetings. Um, the public meetings. I also attended the one in Matarangi, and I have to say that the, the quality of the questions from the Thames and the Tapuru and the level of engagement from the Thames and the Tapuru communities was quite a lot higher than the, the other one that I went to in Matarangi, and that could be for a whole number of different reasons. Um, but I was very, very pleased that, that the Thames community did really step up and engage in that process and will continue to engage in that process. Um, I also had a, a really lovely visit with the CAB. A couple of weeks ago, just to check in on how they're doing, um, and I wanted to say thank you to them. They've got 22 volunteers that work pretty pretty hard, and they said that they get a range of inquiries for you know a hundred different things a day. You never know what you're going to get, and um, and they say that at the moment they are picking up a little bit of the slack from the the closed, uh, the, but the visitor centre has been closed because of family improvement. Um, and they said that they've been picking up a little bit of that slack as well. And so I wanted to thank them and to, to acknowledge that really the hard work that they do for our community at the So, um, for me, um, I'm looking at the Thames Network Centre running along the courts again as the Thames Business House Network and obviously. Um, and uh, recently I attended the AGM with Justice and Peace, part of the association. Uh, we have a new chairman, a new president, Mr. Ketron, the president of the Board of Justices. Um, he was talking about, I would say, I want to say, but he was at that time. Uh, Justice and Erin, we all know what they do um, for our community mm -hmm. and for our people. So mm -hmm. um, it's uh, it a really, uh, really good meeting. Um, and um, we actually gave out a few live memberships as well and made a couple of honoraries. So that would mean what's like our people out here for Chief Egan's presentation. I remove the the members of the report. And then we can close. And then we can close. Thank you. Thank you. But yeah, yeah. We're going to have a discussion after the after the chair again and see that we're going to the Thank you. Um, I'll be honest, I would love to change the program. Thank you.